Hey everybody, this is Kelly of Rojo Chief. They want to make you believe that these stereotypes dealing with chicken and watermelon has something to do with African culture, but it does not. It has everything to do with your American Indian culture and food. Okay, so guys, we're going to look at the different foods that the American Indian people had. As, as you know, the elder chief Sagamore of the Poconoke tribe, which now is called the uh, Wapanog people. He was talking about how they took away your culture and they link your language and things like that. But we still have our culture um, more than we know because we're still eating the foods of our ancestors uh, that our American Indian ancestors hunted and that they grew for thousands, if not millions, millions of years. So let's look at this. And it says here, it says there were four basic ways for people in ancient societies to find food, hunting and fishing, gathering, farming, and raising domesticated animals. It says there were not many domesticated animals in North America before Europeans arrived, only turkeys, ducks, and dogs, and most tribes did not eat dog meat, although some did. In South America, llamas and guinea pigs were also raised by some tribes for their meat. So I'm going to skip down. It says, every American Indian tribe that we know of took part in hunting and fishing to get fresh meat to eat. The Inu, Eskimo, and some Indian tribes of the far north relied almost entirely on hunting and fishing to survive. Some, it should be American Indians, were primarily big game hunters migrating frequently to follow herds of bison and caribou. And, you know, it's a shop, coffee shop called Caribou Coffee. So anyways, so it says the Blackfoot and the Sioux are two examples of big game hunting tribes. And tribes like these, large groups of, should be American Indians, because we know the elder, he taught us that Native American is a person that is born on a place, born in America, but not an Aborigine. So anyway, drive large animals into an ambush, a man-made pit, or over a cliff, sometimes setting controlled fires or building fences to cut off their escape. In other tribes, such as the Chippewa or the Creek, each individual American Indian hunter will stalk deer, rabbits, and other game and set snares or traps for them. In fishing tribes, they say Native American again, should be American Indian, fishermen will either catch fish and hunt marine mammals <clears throat> from their canoes or else set fish, nets, and wooden traps for them. The Tlingit or Salish are two examples of Northwest Indian tribes who got most of their meat <clears throat> through fishing. Native hunting and fishing weapons vary from tribe to tribe, but most common ones were bows and arrows, spears, harpoons, fish hooks, and blowguns. Since farming was another very important source of American Indian food materials. And then they have here, they here to go with this native stuff again. Native agriculture, which is supposed to be American agriculture, was most advanced in what is now the southern United States, Mexico, and the Andean region of South America. Uh, Native Americans, aka American Indians, from those areas used special farming techniques, irrigation, terracing, crop rotation, and planting windbreaks to improve their farms. And they usually harvested enough crops to dry and store for the winter. Some examples of Southern Native American tribes, aka American Indian tribes, who were expert farmers is the Hopi, the Navajo, and the Cherokee. Now we know a lot of the Hopi and the Navajo is on the western part of the United States. And uh, some of the Navajo is also, I think, in Mexico. But the Cherokee is known mainly for being a woodland southeastern Indian tribe. Then it says here, it says other tribes in the north planted crops and garden plots in their villages, but did not harvest enough to last the winter and split up into hunting camps instead. An example of the northern tribes who farmed this way was the Lenape and the Iroquois. So like the Lenape, uh, an example of that is Norris from Steel Turtle. Okay, he's a Lenape Indian. All right. So anyways, it says besides food crops, it says Native American farmers grew cotton, hemp, 
tobacco, and medicinal plants. Gathering is a general term for collecting food that grows wild in the environment. Sometimes this is a very basic sort of task, such as picking blueberries from a bush. Other times, gathering can be complicated and require special tools and training, such as tapping trees for maple syrup or grinding and leaching acorns into edible flour, the kinds of wild foods gathered by Indian tribe, and the tools they needed to do it with vary a lot, depending on where the tribe lived. Usually, Native Americans, a.k.a. American Indian, gathered wild foods in addition to hunting, fishing, and farming. What were some typical Native American food? The most important Native American food was the Indian corn. Now that is something that was on the schedule of my great great grandpapa, who was born in um, Creek Indian Territory, and he grew Indian corn, as well as he hunted deer and rabbit. And as you saw earlier, they said that the Creeks had hunted deers, and they hunted, um, I believe it was deers and rabbits. And I remember my father was telling me that my grandparents uh, did that, particularly my grandpa Ferris had did that with my cousin. Um, my grandmother's cousin had hunted those foods. So now that it all makes sense. It's a connection there. So it makes a lot of sense that we definitely probably have Creek Indian ancestry. So anyways, let's look at these other things. It said here, the majority of American Indian tribes grew at least some corn and even tribes that did not grow corn themselves often traded with neighbors for it. Other important American Indian crops included beans. My, and my father loved beans. My mother liked squash. So it says beans, squash, pumpkins, sunflowers, wild rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes. And see, and that's something that they say that black people, a.k.a. American Indians, a.k.a. American Negroes, that we love to eat. Sweet potatoes what they want to call yams, okay? Tomatoes, peppers, peanuts. And who was known, who was the peanut man? George Washington Carver, okay? So that's an American Indian crop. Avocados, papayas, chocolate. And you know, chocolate is plentiful in Mexico or Mexico from the sheep people, which is the Omex, okay? So anyways, whether they were farming tribes or not, most Native Americans, aka American Indians, had very... Meat heavy diet. Favorite meats included buffalo, the elk, the caribou, the deer, and the rabbit, salmon, and other fish, ducks. And I remember my dad also said that they used to um, hunt ducks as well. It said geese, turkeys, and other birds, clams, and other selfish and marine mammals like seals and even whales. But also, any animal who lived in the Americas in ancient times was sometimes added to the menu. Even animals you might not think of as food, like porcupines, monkeys, or snakes. Many American Indian tribes had strong beliefs against wasting food, so if they kill an animal for any other reason, they will often try to eat it. Other foods that could be found naturally in the Americas were often eaten by American Indians, including eggs, hunty, um, maple sugar, I mean, maple syrup, sugar, salt, and nuts. Peanuts, pine nuts, cashews. My mom loves cashews. Hickory nuts and acorns. Fruits, which they always tell us about, is cranberries. I love strawberries. My dad, my granddaddy used to grow strawberries. Uh, blueberries, raspberries, choke cherries. I've never seen those before. Wild plums and persimmons. And I heard some people say that their ancestors eat that for cinnamons. And then it says a wide variety of beans, roots, and greens. And we know that we tear up some collard greens, of course, right? So it says American Indian cooking tended to be simple. Most Native Americans prefer to eat their food very fresh without any spices. This was different in Mexico and Central America where Indians tended to use less fresh meat and more spices, including hot peppers, cumin, and chocolate seasoning, meat, was usually roasted over the fire or grilled on hot stones. Fish was often baked or smoked. So now you know where smoking meats, where you get that from. Soups and stews were popular in some tribes. 
that's why we have, you know, in New Orleans, you have uh, the different stews, like gumbo, for instance. That, that would be the examples. Uh, corn was eaten in many different ways, including corn on the cob, popcorn, hominy, and tortillas. But, you know, they didn't mention grits because grits is also, I think it's kind of like hominy, corn, corn hominy, I think that's what grits is. And then it says cornbread which we eat and everybody know that the so-called black person, the American Indian eats cornbread. So now, you know, that's American Indian as well. It says Indian and most tribes enjoy fruit puddings, maple candy for dessert. Most native Americans also drink water with their meals, but hot chocolate was popular beverage in Mexico. And some Indians in central and South America develop an alcoholic drink called chicha. I never, I never tried it before, but I definitely would like to. Okay, and then let's see what else do they have here. It says Northeast Woodland tribes ate wild rice and cranberries. Um, it says general American Indian recipe for corn cakes and another for blueberry wa japi, which is a kind of soup fruit pudding. You could also make tamales, which are a popular Mexican food of Aztec origin or fry bread. And then it says here, American Indian ingredients such as succotash and bean salad or native fruit salad. Okay. Okay, now look at these bombs that's being dropped right here. Okay, you know that in the southeastern United States, that's where the plantations were at but that's where the Indian tribes such as the Cherokee the Creek the Seminoles the um, Chickasaws the Cotaba and all the other tribes that existed in the southeastern corridor of the United States were so it says here it says to a far greater degree than anyone realizes several of the most important most important food dishes of the southeastern Indians live on today and the soul food eaten by both black and white southerners. Now, who created soul food? Who's associated with soul food? Right. That's the American Indian. The American Indian is the American Negro. We already know that the American Indians were reclassified as what? Negroes and blacks. That's the reason why soul food right is actually they telling you is southeastern indian food dishes so southeastern food dishes southeastern indian food dishes it is soul food and that soul food those southeastern indian food traditions was taught to the europeans that's in the south okay let's look at it how many for example, still eating, sofki uh, lives on as grits, cornbread used by southern cooks, Indian fritters known as hoe cakes or johnny cakes. Indians boil cornbread is present in southern cuisine of the cornmeal dumplings and hush puppies. Southern cooks their beans and fill peas by boiling them as did the Indians. Like the Indians, they cure their meat and smoke it over hickory coals. And I remember... My granddaddy was from Alabama, and I remember he was telling me in the little town that he lived in that he remembered the men would take the meat, and the women would, would take the the intestines and things and other parts of the hog and other meats that they had hunted down, and they would smoke them. They would go to a big smokehouse. Okay, okay. So anyways, and it says, Southeastern Native Americans traditionally supplement their diets with meats derived from hunting of native game. Vincent has always been an important meat staple due to the abundance of the white-tailed deer in the area. Rabbits, squirrels, possums, raccoons. Livestock adopted from Europeans form hogs and cattle. And then aside from more commonly consumed parts of the animals traditional to eat, 
organ meats. And isn't that what the American Negro, a.k.a. American Indian, love to eat? Okay, it says liver, brains, and intestines. Our people to this day still eat chitterlings, which are the intestines of the hogs. Am I right? Okay, so it says that the tradition remains today as chitterlings come commonly called chitlins, which is the fried large intestines of hogs. Liver mush, a common dish in the Carolinas, um, made from hog liver, pork brains, and eggs. Okay. So I'm just looking at these, trying to see if there's any other techniques that they're showing here. See, they have some plantains and jerk chicken. So, and we know that that's from Jamaica or Zamaka with the Arawaks and the Caribs. And they say it right here, American Indians, Circum Caribbean, the region comprises the cultures of the Arawaks, the Caribs, and the uh, Siboney. And the Taino or the Greater Antilles, and it says, "Well, the first of the New World is not the New World; it's the Old World." Okay, so it says, "The Taino, cassava, sweet potato, maize, beans, squash, pineapple, peanut, peppers." And then it says, um, "Edge, eco, same as the pepper pot, a a soup believed to have originated in Cuba." Before Columbus arrived, the soup mixes a varieties of meat, tubers, and peppers. Barbecue, the origin of English word for barbecue. A method of slow grilling meat over a fire pit. Jerk, a style of cooking meat that originated with the Taino of Jamaica. So who are the Jamaicans? They are Arawaks. They are the Caribs. They are... The, ta uh, the Tainos, air white people, Carib people. That's who the Jamaicans are. Cause you see it right there. Jerking the meat. Okay, you see where it come from. That's an American Indian thing. It says meat was applied with a dry rub, allspice, scotch, butternut pepper, additional spices. Before smoking it over the fire or wood charcoal. Casabi, a crispy, thin flatbread made from cassava root. Widespread in the pre-Columbian, Caribbean, and Amazonia. Bambi, a Jamaican bread made from cassava and water. Now, think about this. If those copper-colored Indians, the Jamaicans, if they were African, then why, how would they know to jerk the meat like the Indians that are Tainos? And how would they know to make this bread? I'll wait. It says, today the bread is fried and made with coconut milk. The guanami, a Puerto Rican food similar to the Somali, made with cornmeal, cornmeal and mashed cassava together. Mama Juna, a tea in Hispanola, which is the land of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Bush teas. It says a popular of a herbal remedy in the Virgin Islands and other parts of the Caribbean derived from indigenous sources such as the ginger, thomas, sour sop, inflammation bush, key nip, worm grass, worry wine. Okay. Then the tumali, carob sauce made from green liver meat of lobsters, chili pepper, and lime juice. And it says, the pre-conquest cuisine of the American Indians of Mesoamerica, major contribution to Mexican and Salvadoran cuisine, Honduran cuisine, Guatemalan cuisine, the cultures involving the Aztec, the Maya, the Olmec, and the Pipleo. Some of the known dishes. The Algeria, a candy made from puffed amaranth and boiled down honey or Magui sap 
in ancient times formed into the shapes of the Aztec gods. Balachi, Mayan fermented honey drink. Cham, Champor Radu, a chocolate drink. Chili, corn tortillas, guacamole. Harachi, mezcal, mole. Pe gel, la grotto, a fish with the alligator like head seasoned with amesh, ito, chili and lime, pozzoli, salsa, tacos, tamales, tapachi. I think this oxcolate. And then there's some other foods that's up here too that's listed. Grilled guinea pig, like they were talking about. Um, earlier then you see the foods over here on the side okay so it's a lot of foods that they had listed okay and you guys could check this out later because I'm gonna have the link below but I just wanted to let you guys know and to see that how greens as you see it's a picture right there and cornbread are definitely a part of the American Indian diet and that what you thought was soul food is a really American Indian foods as well. And that the soul food is really American Indian cuisine. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> In this article, it says food staples. That's what I'm starting it. And it says the three sisters. What are the three sisters? Corn, beans, squash are the staples in Native American cooking. And that's what the so-called African-American, the American Negro, the American Indian, that's what we eat on a regular basis. Okay, we eat that on a regular basis. Beans, cornbread, mm -hmm, sometimes squash. So, and then they said also it includes salmon. We eat that and game like I said earlier, deer, rabbit, duck, and bison. And then look, there it is, cornbread. Okay? Many dishes which are popular in America today have been adapted from traditional American Indian cooking method and recipes. Cornbread was a staple of American Indian diet for many years before Europeans arrived on the continent. Okay? Now you have to think to yourself, if you were African then why in the hell would your African ancestors eat and know how to prepare cornbread, which is an American Indian staple? It doesn't make sense. They would have just stuck to the food and recipes of their habitat from the place that they came from. So anyways, it says fry bread was another popular food item served both in the home and at gatherings, either alone or with a topping like honey. And I love honey. In addition to breads, Native Americans are known to making a variety of soups and vegetables, uh, succotash, a mixture of lima beans, tomatoes, and corn, which they mentioned in the other um, thing. Okay, they mentioned that before, so we'll end this right here. Right here, it tells you the early European observer, James Adder, who spent time amongst the southern native peoples from 1700 to about 1735, wrote that the native peoples ate little raw food and beyond berries and fruits. As versatile as the Europeans, they baked, boiled, fried, and roasted their food. Now, these are things that our ancestors do right now to this day. They bake their meat, they bake chicken, they fry chicken, they roast chicken, we boil crawfish, we boil crabs, lobsters you see what i'm saying so all these techniques are they they're telling you are techniques of the american indian and we still do these techniques to this day when it comes to our foods and they already mentioned that soul food that the majority of soul food is basically american indian dishes so that tells you right there that the black person or the person they want to call the American Negro, the person that they want to call the African American, the person they want to call blacks are really the descendants of the Southeastern Indians because our diet is basically completely American Indian. It is an African because all these things that we eat on a regular basis, such as corn, 
such as grits, such as greens, such as chitlins, watermelon, fried chicken, fried fish, baked chicken, lobsters, crabs, beans, succotash, stews, such as gumbo, etc. These all are American Indian foods. Now, you see it. What does it say? The journey of the handled ancient American watermelon. Let's rewind that. The journey of the handled ancient American watermelon from Native American artifact to your garden. All right. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It says, but some people love murder mysteries. I have the same feeling. Only I like to unravel the mysteries of plants. These are the words of Art Combe, who was known as the wizard of the Wasatch County. He was an intrepid plant breeder of the early 20th century and the seed sleuth of the American Southwest. Let's read that again. <clears throat> so he's telling you, this was a plant and is a plant. This is a food that is indigenous to what area? Africa or America? America. And they said it is grown in the Southwest. Now, so how is it that this is an American Indian food that's that was grew in the southwest of America. And you can also find it in other parts of the Americas as well. But this is what they're telling you that is ancient to the Americas. So how is it that now you have different outlets that's lying to you and saying that it's a staple from Africa? It is not. It's an American Indian food. And it's also a food that they use to try to shame our people with, which I will show you in the next clip. Good for your stomach. Oh, Daddy, can I get some of the watermelon? No, I'm not going to give you none. I'll save the seed for you, and you can have watermelons of your own. Hey, guys. Today, I'm going to show you how to make collard greens. Here's what you're going to need. You can see the collard greens that we have over here in the sink. And that's five bundles of collard greens, okay? You're going to need smoked turkey. Now, you can use smoked turkey legs. You can use um, smoked turkey wings. You're going to need black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, accent. Hot sauce is optional. You're going to need vinegar. You can use white vinegar or apple cider vinegar. You're going to need chicken broth. You're going to need fresh garlic. <clears throat> You're going to need one large onion chopped up. And over here where the gold wrapper is, you're going to need four bouillon cubes, okay? Just so I'm back again with some cornbread. Um, so let's go. What you're going to do... Yeah, <laughs> it tastes like it's a fried chicken sandwich. <laughs> 